Rise and shine, mothers and brothers. Wednesday morning on my way to work, beard on point. This is my Monday morning. I work Wednesday through Saturday, cutting men's hair, grooming beards, doing shaves, God forbid. I'm posting a picture on Instagram today from one year ago where I shaved my beard off last summer. Scares me to think about it. There's gonna be a picture on Instagram later of me after I did a straight razor shave on my face. I went down to a goatee, and then I started fresh at the end of summer. So, and that's what I have now. I trimmed probably six times since, uh, since I started growing the beard, which is irritating because I would I would be at my beard goal right now if I didn't if I didn't trim and if I had patience, which is ridiculous. Literally, it'd be two inches longer. But I was so impatient. I had to look good. I had to look trim. I had to. I I cared about what people thought about me. Don't give a hoot what people think about you if you work in the public eye, like I do, there's ways of grooming your beard to make it look neat and acceptable until it's long and easier to shape and maintain, like today. The, I mean, just for what I have right now, even after trimming, like if I pull these hairs up, they're gonna come up to about here. I, I, I was trimming all the way down to about like right here, from here down I was shaping. No, I'm sorry, from here up I was shaping. So this area here on my cheeks is, is much shorter. It's longer now, but it was much shorter compared to the, the long hairs uh, from the extended goatee area down. Wednesday through Saturday, I, work. I don't even know what my book looks like. I cut the hair and trim the beards of people from 10 states. People fly in to see me. I'm not saying that to build my business. I'm saying it because it's a fact. Do I want more customers? Of course. What I want is more high paying customers, which is what I'm going for. You know the story I told this before of the guy whose machine in his factory broke down and he called the repairman. The repairman came and tapped it with a hammer and the thing started right up again. He got an itemized bill for $300. The guy said, wait a minute, you only came here and tapped the machine and you charged me $300. The repairman said, tapping of the hammer, $5. Knowing where to tap, $295. And that's what it's like when you go to a good beardsmith or a stylist or barber. There's a lot of people out there with clippers and scissors and combs in their hands, but not a lot of people know where to put those things. Keep that in mind. So it's worth every penny. If, if you are getting a beard trim for 10 American dollars, I'm just saying you're probably not going to get the best job. You might. There's a lot of people who don't think very highly of themselves and they and they have kept their trade a trade. I like to say that I took a humble trade and turned it into a profession. It doesn't have to be a low paying trade. This is what I, I'm also looking to train somebody. Are you looking to change careers? Are you looking for um, a new opportunity? Have doors closed on you? Do you have a, a record that's not allowing you to move forward because of things you've done in your past? That doesn't matter to me at all. It means nothing to me. What matters is your willingness to learn, your willingness to shore up your appearance, and to act like a professional and not have to run out in between every haircut and smoke a cigarette 
because there's nothing worse than, honestly, this is my personal pet peeve. The hair people who run out and smoke after every client and they come back and they're, and they're putting, and even though they wash their hands and put a mint in their mouth, they smell like smoke. I save my pipe smoking for the evening, late in the evening, or cigar smoking about once a month. I smoke a cigar, as you know. Um, my humidor is filled. I have a beautiful little uh, box of, I don't know what you would call it. It's just, the grain is magnificent. And it's filled. And every time people go on vacations, they'll bring back cigars for me and things like that. And I, since I've gotten into pipes, I haven't had as many cigars. I will say this, the cigar that I had the other day made my breath nasty, minimum for a day after. I just, and I'm an obsessive teeth brusher, gargler, flosser, and I will tell you what, I don't know what it was. I have no idea what it was. I know the, the better the cigar, the less likely your breath is going to be nasty. I know that for a fact. When you smoke cheap crap that's chemical laden, you're going to get that nasty, really nasty uh, breath. And your beard's not going to smell good. I noticed that when I smoke a pipe, my beard smells like, literally, like a walk in a pine forest. It's just beautiful, earthy. What are the words that we use to describe pipe tobaccos? Earthy mossy, leathery, tannin, pine, cedar. Some of the other words, when you open up a tin of pipe tobacco, I love raisin bread, fresh cut hay, fresh cut grass, early harvest, things like that, beautiful stuff. I, I love those kind of words. They're actually the same, a lot of those words are the same words that we use to describe cigars, that we use to describe coffee, chocolate. This is what I want to talk to you about this morning, is your goals. What are your goals? I suggest that you hit the reset button and listen to people like Grant Cardone on YouTube. Listen to Grant. You may not like his style, you might like his style. I like his style because I'm used to that type of person, that kind of in-your-face kind of thing, although that's not my communication style. I grew up with a family like that, so I'm used to it. I can get past the in-your-face kind of style. But what I would like, to, like you to do is to listen to, on YouTube, various speakers to put a fire under you. I might be one of those people that puts a fire under you. Now, I want to relax you as well. And believe me, there's nothing more motivating. This is what's interesting. Goals are, they serve a dual purpose. Goals are motivating and goals are peaceful. When you know you're working on your goals, you're at peace. Because you know you're not going to get it overnight. If you're an instant gratification junkie, goals aren't going to work for you. Because you want things to happen tomorrow. They don't. Sometimes things take years to happen. In the same way, bad habits have taken years. I started talking about this last week and I don't know why. I was probably at about the same spot in the road right now on the way to work, geographically. Because I remember being right here. I'm right near a Cadillac dealership. And I remember talking about this last week and then I just like went off on stream of consciousness stuff. You ever see a sign in the road that says, beware of ruts? What's a rut? Ruts are a groove on the side of the road, maybe a drainage ditch, or a rut is uh, like if you live in a very snowy area where after a snowfall, cars have a tendency to drive through the snow, creating almost like a rut, a, a trail, and you keep your tires in those grooves, in those ruts, and you try to get off of them. It's almost like trying to drive on train tracks, how they kind of keep you, you know, if you've ever uh, driven along train tracks. I know when I was a kid, we used to 
try to do that and on these rails that, that didn't have trains going on them. And there was a, a favorite swimming hole that I used to go to and drive along train tracks. I wasn't foolish enough to <laughs> drive on a, uh, on a live rail. Anyways, the signs that say beware of ruts, when it comes to goals in your life, I'm going to rephrase it like this. Beware of ruts. Some can be 10 years long. You ever get into a rut, a behavioral rut, ordering Papa John's pizza? I love Papa John's. I like pa That's my favorite national commercial brand, although I like home-style, New York-style pizzas, hand-tossed and all that kind of like traditional pizzas, that's that's what I grew up on. But there's times when I get home from work and I do not feel like cooking, so I just pull out the Papa John's app, that's my thing, and just get a pizza and some wings delivered and have a nice hoppy IPA. But here's the deal. It, you can get into a rut ordering out and not cooking, and then next thing you know, you're 50 pounds heavier than you should be because you get into a rut. When you start piling clothes up in the laundry room or behind a door or hanging on a doorknob, you get into a rut. When you, when you go after certain people, you, you might pursue the lowest hanging fruit rather than holding out. And, you know, like for instance, there's people that date or marry what they can. They, they, they accept what comes after them rather than them choosing, and they take second best for them because first best means you have to possibly lose a couple pounds, and nothing against anyone who who's carrying more weight. I, I was, and I'm not condemning you for it. I would encourage you to be healthier. Work towards a healthier lifestyle. I think that's a better thing. But ruts could last years, man. Years. Years of not taking care of yourself. Years of eating like crap. Years of bad relationships. And you say to yourself, when am I going to wake up? And sometimes it takes a single person. And I don't know what the chemistry is or the, the deal is. Not everybody relates to Tony Robbins. Not everybody relates to Jim Rohn. I like them. I like Jim Rohn. R-O-H-N. Jim Rohn. If you don't know him, look him up on YouTube. Phenomenal. Anything that you put on by Jim Rohn has the potential of changing your life. He's all about action. And I'm not really super spiritual in the sense, I'm not into the whole, uh, what's the word, uh, law of attraction. I'm more of a law of action guy. I can have a roast beef sandwich in front of me and keep thinking ham sandwich. No matter how much I picture a ham sandwich in my head, number one, that roast beef is not going to turn to ham. Number two, it's just not going to appear. i got to do something. So cultivate action. Now, you, you have to make a decision in your head, but many times if you don't make a decision, for instance, just get to the gym, get there. Just get there. Sit in the parking lot, do that today. Tomorrow, get to the gym, walk in, walk out. Day number three, get to the gym, walk in, do one push up, walk out. You understand? It's incremental. You don't have to go there and be a bodybuilder right from day one. And, and then come back and be sore for two weeks because you're in recovery. Your, your body's in recovery from you working out. I love these people that go and work out. I'm so sore. Well, take it easy, man. Take it easy. Your body, as, as my friend Stacy Redfield from stacyredfield.com, check her out. You'll love her. StacyRedfield.com. She says, your body is meant to last a lifetime. You were not meant to tinker out the last 20 years of your life like everybody is on a ton of medication and, and everything revolves around doctor appointments the last 20 years of your life. Life is not meant to 
be lived like that. Your body's meant to last a lifetime. Take care of it. What are you going to do today? What move will you make today towards your goals? About two months ago, I made a move towards creating virtual income through books that I've written, ebooks that I've written and published, videos, usable content. It has to be usable content. You need a fan base. I am now approaching 5,000 subscribers. I'm happy about that. It's a very, very, what's the word? It's, think about this. Think about the people who watch my channel. Who are they? They have one thing in common. Facial hair. So it's a very, very specialized body of content. Beards, facial hair, mustaches. We're obsessed with it, and that's okay. It's part of how we look. It's what we what we see when we look in the mirror. If you work in public, it's important to have an acceptable looking facial fur. If you if you <clears throat> wear a hard hat, drive a tractor, are in a tractor trailer, uh, cab. If you're uh, driving a forklift, if you're doing any kind of physical labor. A beard means that you don't have to spend time in front of the mirror grooming yourself. A beard means freedom. We don't grow beards to, to put more weight on our shoulders. We don't grow beards to have more shackles, to have more restriction. A beard equals freedom. Keep it, keep it good looking, keep it as natural as possible which will mean low maintenance, which means that you're not gonna get all stressed out by it. If you put all kinds of funky lines in your beard, believe me, every couple days you're gonna be obsessing and freaking out because that line is growing out. That's why I am the big beard specialist. Guys who are looking for shape ups and line ups and that real tight, you know, the C, that C, like the temples that are pointed and the, those guys don't come to me because I don't do that kind of work. I do this kind of work. So finally, someone has entered the men's fashion, hair care, and grooming arena who does nothing but big beards. Nothing but. That's all I do. For me, there's power and money in working with this. Some people, I, I still, to this day, get people saying to me, I like you better without your beard. I like, I like seeing your smile. I love seeing your handsome face, girls tell me. That's fine. The fact that you know that there's a nice smile and a handsome face under this, let that, let that bring you peace because you know what? This is not going anywhere. Let's just make that clear right now. I like my beard. This face is not gonna see a razor ever again. It's not going to, that's just the way it is. It's my business card. I could be sitting at a bar during a happy hour. This is the truth, literally. Just sit and having one beer and, and an appetizer. Let's say I go and just have some wings and beer. By the end of my little time where I'm having wings and beer at the bar, someone will comment on my beard, ask me what I do for a living, talk about how they wish they could grow a beard like this. And what's interesting is that they, they end up inquiring about it and how did you grow it? And I always wanted to do that. And what does that do? Boom, business card. I hand them my business card at that point. I can't go anywhere without handing out business cards. That is how my business grows and through social media. I am not a, I am not a neighborhood barber, a neighborhood stylist. I am a cyberhood person. People find me on the web. They wanna to come to me. I wear my business card. That's what works for me. So what's interesting is is that this has become an advertisement. It's like a billboard on my face and it works perfect for me and it gives me freedom. And I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. Now that it has turned white, I love it. When my beard was salt and pepper, I didn't like it as much because I, I was hoping that it would turn white. When I first started getting gray hair, 
I really didn't like the gray hair popping in. The more gray I got, the more that I liked it. The joke that I have now is I look in the mirror and I go, damn, a dark hair, in the same way that dark hair people go, damn, a gray hair. I don't want dark hair anymore. I want my hair to turn whiter and whiter and whiter. Now that it's kind of like silver on top and white in the facial hair, I, I actually enjoy this look. And when I go to networking events where I'm dressed up, like, like this is me going to work. Suspenders, kind of a satin type dress shirt, a classic paisley tie, it's a little bit thinner. This thing's probably 30 years old. I bought this many, many years ago. Actually 30, more like 35. Yeah, about 35 years ago. And I love this tie. And I wear all my ties, the fat ones and the skinny ones. And I don't, but I don't wear uh, bow ties as much because they, they're weird with a beard, with a long beard. They don't work really well. Number one, you can't see them. Number two, every time you turn your head, the beard kind of gets caught on it. And I don't, if you look at me from a side view, I don't trim my beard. I don't do that weird angle thing. And I would encourage you to not do that. You know that weird, where it makes your beard kind of look like a wedge? If you look at the side view of my beard, it just comes down the front. Actually, I encourage my beard like this. When your beard's shorter, you, you do this. When your beard's longer, you put the back of your hand and you encourage it to come down the front of your chest. So I want my beard to come down the same way my tie comes down. What was I getting at? Oh, working like a, uh, like a billboard, like a business card for me. And it attracts people. When I go to a, a business card exchange, when I go to a networking meeting, nine times out of 10, literally nine times out of 10, I am the only guy there with a big beard, the only guy there with a white beard. And it's awesome. I'm easy to remember. And even though beards are popular, wherever you go, even the, like when I go to a biker bar, there's a couple biker bars that I go to, and I call them biker bars because they're they're just filled with, with guys with beards, plenty of tattoos, and women who like guys with beards and tattoos, and they typically play rock and roll. Those are the places that I like because I tend to like the authenticity of, there's not a lot of people there who color their hair, and not a lot of people there who um, who have weird contrived styles. I like more natural hair, more natural beard. That's my personal preference, and I don't put down anyone who, who chooses something different. Because remember, Beards Without Borders is about peace, is that I appreciate you, you appreciate me. I commit to you peace, you commit to me peace, or I have nothing to do with you. That's the way it works, beards without borders. Whether those borders are states, or whether those borders are international borders, or if the ocean is a border. If I have to travel 5,000 miles across the great ocean, and I see a guy with a beard, point at you. Nice beard, brother. And he knows exactly what I'm talking about, even though he can't understand a word of English, and I can't understand a word of what he's saying. So a beard, a big, you know, a big, well-kept beard is a universal language. But I'm at the point now where, and this is the beautiful thing about white beards, when you go somewhere and you have a big white beard, you're not only a guy with a big beard, you're a guy with a big white beard. A big white, well-kept beard. A big white, on-point beard. I never used the phrase on-point until people were saying to me, man, your beard is on-point. And I started using that phrase about a year ago. I don't know what it means or what the origin of it is, but I say it now. I get bothered when I say things and I'm not sure what it means. I know it means like it's good looking or it's well groomed, or like when someone says your beard is on point. I have come to understand that that's a compliment. So my response is thank you, but I don't know exactly what that means. So the beard is a networking tool for me. It works. It's a, um, especially when you're, there's nothing like being dressed up. Now I dress up for work every day and I'm with people all the time on my days off. 
I don't even like being around people, honestly. I love being by myself, smoking a pipe, watching Netflix, reading, studying, and building my online business. That's important to me. So I can provide for my family, so I can live where I want, so I can drive the vehicle that I want. I'm working towards all those goals. That's what's happening in my life right now. What's happening in your life? What goals do you have? I have goals. I share them with you a little bit at a time. I'm closer to 60 than I am to 50, and I still have goals. I ain't rolling over and playing dead. I am not ready to go. I'm not ready for the rocking chair. I can probably still bench press 250. I'm guessing. It's more than my weight. I'm happy about that. I can still run a mile in probably seven minutes. I can still eat half a pizza and drink a six pack <laughs> as well too. So that's, uh, that's another thing that I can do. But when I'm not working, when I'm not dressed up with a you know dress shirt, tie, suspenders, or a vest, and all groomed up, I am usually in a pair of jeans, a t-shirt, a denim vest, boots. I like boots. In the summertime, dock siders. I, just, I want to be cool. My beard is cool. Here we are, we're approaching the middle of summer, and my beard is cool. It's cool, it is not hot. Man, is that thing hot? I'm like, no, not at all. Evaporative cooling and shade from the sun. It, it's wonderful, my beard is one. You're gonna shave that off for the summer? Heck no. That's like, do you go up to clean shaven people and say, are you gonna grow a beard this winter because it's cold? No, of course not. So why do they come up to me and say, are you gonna shave it off for the summer? Well, guys, I am at work right now. I work in a mall. I work in a mall. Some guy just almost cut me off too, he's not looking. I work in a damn mall. And I'm now going into the parking garage. Thank you so much for your time. Again, my name is George Bruno. You can call me Bruno. That's how they know me. Bruno, also known as the Sultan of Silver on Instagram as George A. Bruno. Facebook, George Bruno Luxury Hair Experience. My webpage, georgebruno.com. YouTube page, Gray Bailey. Don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to this channel, please. Forward this video to friends who you think might be interested and know this. And I'm saying this for the first time. There's a possibility that I could be the first. This is going to sound weird to a lot of you. The first television shopping channel host with a big white beard or show host. Travel channel, that type of thing, with a big white beard. It's going to happen. I'm putting it out there right now. If you know someone who can make it happen, let me know. But that's one of my goals. That's what I did for many years. And actually, I just got submitted by an agent in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, who is not rejecting me because of my big white beard, as many agents have, saying it's not uh, marketable. Well, I disagree with you. Anyways, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Get out there and kill him today, man. Just get out there, identify your goals, and lay one brick. One brick today. If your goals are a wall, that wall is made one brick at a time. Go out there and lay one brick. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching.